Just say, Father, I receive everything you have for me in this moment. Whatever it looks like, if you have it for me, I'll take it. I make myself of no reputation to receive what you have for me. Father, thank you for everything you want to do this afternoon. We give you an advance, thanks in advance for the breakthroughs, for the words, the encounters, for the miracles, everything that you're going to do. We just give you thanks in advance. Amen. 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 You can find a seat. Thanks for coming back this afternoon. Have a good lunch. Did you buy somebody's lunch? Oh, okay. Hopefully you did. <laughs> All right. Glad we're back this afternoon. This is sort of the last session of Encounter School because tonight we'll have a miracle service. How many believe in God that there's going to be a great release of miracles, deliverance, all the things that Jesus came to uh, give humanity and that, we'll, that there'll people that they'll know, they'll say, on that night, everything changed in my life or that thing that I carried for all those years was gone. So I uh, just want to do a few things before we hop into what I feel like the Lord has for us. How many registered to be in the school? Yeah, raise your hand if you registered. Oh, that's good. We have a drawing. Yeah, if you registered. No, uh, we're not quite there yet. Yeah, free trip to Dunn. Karina Sosa. Is Karina here? She was here last night. Doesn't count if you're not here, so she gets her name taken out. She's not feeling well. She should come to the miracle night. It's, it's really funny. People are like, I'm sorry I missed that, that healing meeting. I wasn't feeling well. <laughs> Pam Wakefield. I don't see Pam here. Uh-oh. A lot of people registered didn't come. Okay. It's, it's early in the session. Is that what you're saying? Phyllis Gorman. Is Phyllis here? She's got, got, got to go get her. Yay, Phyllis! We'll let Karina get a gift too. Donna, what do we have for the free gift? I don't even know what the free gift. Take whatever you want on my table. If you want one of everything, it's your gift for registering. God bless you. It pays to register. Doesn't cost you anything. It's actually to your advantage to register. So register next time. Uh, so I just want to tell you, uh, we have a resource table back there. I'm working on my second manuscript right now and digging back into it this week. But uh, this is called Creation Reborn. I believe that what God makes available for individuals he wants to do in cities, regions, and nations. How many know if you led somebody to the Lord tonight, and they said, well, you know, I got, I got drug problems. Hopefully you can pray for them and go, well, my God takes care of drug problems. They say, well, I'm depressed. Well, my God takes care of depression. Well, I haven't had a job in seven years. I need a job. My God can get you a job. So, Hopefully, any issue they had, even when they're in the kingdom, you wouldn't say, no, just, just hold on to that. You're making it to heaven one day. Just be happy with that. So we know that the individual is the down payment for the redemption of cities, regions, and nations. So you'll see he gave Adam stewardship over all the earth. So the earth is important to him. And you'll see a characteristic found in the... Do I need to step back? Okay, you're working on it. Okay, work with it. Thank you, guys. They've been working really hard all weekend. Uh, characteristic you see in the early church is that they accused them of filling the city with the doctrine of Jesus. 
Can you be accused of filling your neighborhood with the doctrine of Jesus? And then Acts 8, verse 8, there was great joy in the city because believers were there. Is Wilmington made better because Global River's here? So those are some measures. It doesn't mean that, you know, we, we take over and we, you know, not like that. But where you are, your life becomes an invitation to other people. Now, a lot of people get born again when things are difficult. That's okay. God will save you at any point. But what about people whose life, my life's pretty good. I have a pretty good career. My kids are doing well. The gospel's meant to meet people at every stage of their life. We shouldn't have to wait for a crisis to hopefully lead someone to the Lord. Amen. So, anyway, there's there. And then last year... Obviously, it was recorded here, Healing of the Land. I really, really encourage you, if you care about um, or are really interested in seeing how um, the abortion issue and uh, slavery are interconnected and seeing that broken off of America. I'm telling you, Roe versus Wade is going to be overturned in America. It is. In Jesus' name, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. And the enemy has over, he usually will, he's overplayed his hand in America, but now people are seeing how evil that is. You know, I mean, we, we know this. If someone murders a woman with a child in the womb, they get charged with two murders. Every state in the union. So, anyway, so that's back there. And then... Um, a few years ago, not too far from down the road, we took a weekend, it's called Prophetic Intensive, and we just took prophetic people through an amazing weekend of just teaching how to live the prophetic lifestyle, how to hone the gift, different between, difference between prophets and prophecy, prophecy, room in a mood, uh, um, the, the, the grace of God in a room, the differences and all these different things, so if you're interested in that, that's all available. Okay, one more thing I just want to take care of here, not take care of, but just... Uh, give you the option to consider. Let me read this here. Proverbs 13, chapter, uh, Proverbs 13, chapter, verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. He who walks with wise men will be wise. And then uh, Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews 6, verse 12, the end of that. That you, not, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those through faith and patience inherit the promises. And uh, here's something I want you to consider. We'll just show a video here in a minute just to have you to see what God's asked us to do as a ministry. There are ministries, well, there are ministries and there are local churches. First of all, God teaches us that, and there is no discipleship process that is not inside the context of community. The only way you can be a proper disciple is that you're working within the context of a community. There's a reason that Jesus cho chooses these 12 guys. It's very fascinating. They have very diverse backgrounds. One of them is probably equivalent to modern-day Al-Qaeda. Another is a tax collector, which we know they were all corrupt and actually took advantage of their own people for their own gain. And God brings them all together in this community to follow him. And I believe one of the reasons he does that is he brings them together because he wants to bring these diverse group of people under the unity of Jesus and also the kingdom of God to bring them in this community that as they walk together, they'd have to walk with people who are different than them, uh, different uh, political ideas, different uh, worldviews, and they're all coming under the unity of Jesus to learn to be like Jesus, but also learn to work with the differences of other people. And if, you, if you'll notice that in the Gospels, 
Not one of those guys says, I'm leaving this group and starting my own group. <laughs> Wasn't considered part of the discipleship process. And, and the reason I say that, so you have the local church, but you also have ministries. And here's what I've learned, that God will bring you into contact or into relationship with different ministries that you're called to connect with that are supposed to add to the purpose and the grace of God on your life. Some you might get to know very closely, some that you, you can know at a, at a distance. There's, there's ministries that I may not know the minister real well, but I have been influenced and impacted through my partnership with their ministry, and I listen to what they say over and over again because a wise man walks with wise men. So if you feel, it's not just, this is just a general principle I'm making, but if you feel connected with our ministry and what we're doing, we're, uh, we, we back, uh, partners are the backbone of what we do, and you can find a, a partner packet on the back there of how you can do that. You can prayerfully consider how to do that. And um, if, you, if you want to sum up the vision, what I feel called to do, if you ever saw that Jesus movie, and I just saw this clip, I didn't see the whole thing, but Peter looks at Jesus and he says, what are we called to do? And he goes, we're going to change the world. He says, you want to join us in changing the world? We're, we average going to seven, eight nations a year. And on Wednesday, I'm going to Philippines first. I'll be there for the weekend. Then I'm going to Nepal the week after that. If you want to know what we do, we do exactly what we do right here. We give people the word of God. Other nations, our partners help pay for those meetings and conferences, us coming together. We focus mostly, we do other things, but mostly focus on leaders and trainings and things. So if I can get 30 leaders in a room, I can begin to change those churches without getting 1,000 people in a room where I'm just, maybe, anyway, you get the point. So, And we're looking to endeavor uh, to forge on in some media projects and uh, also turn everything, all the things that I'm teaching into curriculum and manuals. I have uh, looking at something now and the cost of that, and I know what the cost is, and we're just believing God for the money to reproduce that. So we not just go into nations, but we give them stuff and tools that they can keep. So uh, I said, I don't know when I said it, but sometime in the last session, I said, the gospel is true in every nation. If it doesn't work in their nation, then I'm preaching the wrong gospel. So, anyway, so just watch that video, and then we'll get into what God has for us in that session, in this session. Kingdom was intended to not only radically transform individuals, but also bring a transformation to the nations of the earth. just lift our hands. Let's just pause for a minute. I didn't do this the other session, but we have a little tradition with family and spiritual members that it's when their birthday, everybody gets a birthday prophecy. And so the Lord says, daughter, that in this 93rd year, the spirit of wisdom and revelation will be increasing, understanding of the times and seasons and profound encounters your portion. And any uh, weight or worry or concern 
Anything not from heaven just whew, goes. And we bless you. And I just declare by the authority God has given me, with long life will he satisfy you. With long life. Lord, I declare that she will live every day you intended her to live on the earth. Amen. Jenny, I just see this angel just lifting off weights, heaviness, worry, confusion, spirit of death. Go! And we just say a door into the beauty of the Lord is opening for you. Somebody's neck, the Lord is healing. You have like a knot in your neck. Be healed in your neck. Be healed in your lower back. Whoa. Increase your presence. The fire of God's here. Just moving from my right to this auditorium. Lord, just thank you for the fire of God. Hmm. Just encourage you to lift your hand just like this because often I see this just when I'm praying for individuals. I don't know if I've ever seen this corporately, but the spirit of wisdom and revelation is just being released right now. Whoa, right there. You'll feel it. We receive that. Ears to hear and eyes to see. And the Lord says, some of you need to open your mouth. The spirit of timidity has tried to stop you. And you've been timid. You need to open your mouth and prophesy. You need to open your mouth and speak the ways of God. You need to open your mouth and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hamamo shoho yo boso. Hamamo mo yo bo yo bo yo yo yo. Hamamama ye bebe ki and the Lord says the answer for some of you, about three of you, but it applies to everyone, three of you specifically, you're at a crossroads in your life, and the Lord says if you'll be diligent to pray in the Spirit, the Lord says the answer is right there for you, but you have to pray in the Spirit, pray, and then write the, write the understanding, just write it out because the answer is there. Hemo hoyo bo soko boyo, kama mama, didn't I say I would freely give you all things? And I just see it raining here. Lord, just thank you for the rain now. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the rain of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Lord says, some of you have got too serious. Hey, we just break off that, you know, that's a religious spirit is what it is. You're serious. So we just break that off of you. Well, you've lost your childlike trust. masika. And you know what it was? It was disappointment that's manifesting itself. You're trying to use scripture to masquerade your disappointment. So go! Disappointment. Disappointment of thing. Disappointment of relationships that didn't work out. Hamo yo yo sokoboyo. Kamamo yo yo yo. Where you got hurt in the workplace. We got hurt by a leader. Well, you didn't get the promotion you thought you were definitely going to get. Because your identity was in that. So the Lord says, I didn't want that to open for you. Because you would have been, you would have thought that would have satisfied you. And so the Lord says, I didn't satisfy you with that. So you could find your satisfaction in me. <laughs> Just heard in my spirit, the wild of God is coming back to Global River like never before. The wildness in the line of the tribe of Judah is going to roar as never before. Ha-ma-ma-shika-bahaya. Kemo yo 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 yo. Somoho yo boho soko boyo. Horomoho soko boyo. Korobo shoko no moyo. Shitene me yendere bekiyamahaya. Yes, Lord.
Father, we just thank you. We just come before you now. Thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you that this is Bethel. This is the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So, Father, I know without you, I can't do anything, but with you, all things are possible. Let, Lord, we just we draw upon the wisdom of God. We're in need of the wisdom of God. We're not in need of more information, but impartation, revelation, and faith to receive what you have to say. So we ask for words from heaven. Open up your word to us. Be glorified in this room, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We draw near. Thank you that Jesus himself is in this room, and it'll be like he lays his hands on people. Thank you for the release of an apostolic anointing in this afternoon session, Lord. Give people ears to hear and eyes to see. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I want to go back to that point yesterday that Jesus was the first man since Adam to express God's original intent. Jesus had a vibrant life of fellowship with the Father. His fellowship with God, with God was personal, intimate, and solitary. Personal, intimate, and solitary. Can you say you have a personal, intimate, and solitary relationship with the Lord? Can you say that you find great joy and satisfaction in communing with the Lord? Good. It gets better. Hmm. Have you ever noticed walking with God is like, this is amazing, but there's more. It's not that you're dissatisfied, but every time you're, you, you, you see him, and it, that's why they're always saying holy. It's not because they're Pentecostal. It's because they actually see a new facet of his holiness. That's just one attribute of him. But every time they look up, they're like, ooh, I didn't see that before. Ooh, oh God, he's really big, you know. We mentioned this last night, that Jesus, we see this in, in, in Luke's gospel. Now it came to pass in those days, he went to a mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. One of the places where he prays all night, the next day he chooses his apostles. So you'll notice that I, I, I want to suggest to you that's not a coincidence that it's in there. Because it's teaching us that the will of God, Jesus did not just automatically know what to do. He had to lean in to the Father to discern the will of God. And then, of course, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Now, the morning having risen, a long while before daylight, he went and departed to a solitary place where he prayed. Now, I want to go, uh, I didn't touch on this, and I'm thankful. That's why I do multiple sessions, because this is a scripture I really wanted to look at last night. The foundation, of course, of our fellowship with God to imitate Jesus, obviously the Apostle Paul, and I, I want to want you to note that when God makes a command, and we know that all scripture, right? All scripture is given by God for inspiration, for doctrine, for reproof and correction. All scripture. All of it. Old and new. All the parts that you don't even understand, they're all given by God. So when God is speaking in Scripture, he is not giving a suggestion because he's not American. He's giving, especially through Paul and his epistles, he's giving an apostolic command. He goes, this is what you're supposed to do. And he says, be imitators of God. So Jesus, we know, and he read it this morning, Jesus had the foundation of Jesus' connection with the Father was this experience in the love of God, knowing the love of God, being convinced in the love of God. And this is what John says in his epistle. First John, not the gospel of God, but First John. I encourage you again, read that book over and over again. Verse 16, and we have known. That word known is gnisko. It's intimate. It's, it's the, the connotation there is intimacy, like sexual intercourse. We have known. That means we've had intimate knowledge and believed. Believe is simply a complete trust and reliance. So he says, I've had an experience with the love of God, and now I'm trusting the love of God. So it's actually possible to have an experience with the love of God, but not put your trust in the love of God. That's why knowing the character of God is extremely important if you're going to walk by faith, because you won't trust a God that you don't know his character. 
We have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God. So he says, you can't abide in God unless you know, believe, and trust. That's what causes you to abide in him. He who abides in his love in God and God in him. And, and then we, we touched on last night for most of it, uh, for most of the session is this, that um, we, we touched on the, the lies that cause us to not believe and trust that love. I encourage you to get the, get the tape. That's an old school saying there. Get the tape. I believe we'll have all these available on MP3. By the way, if you buy them before you leave today, I think there's less money. Work out a deal back there. So the foundation of discipleship is fellowship with God, and the foundation of fellowship with God is knowing and believing the love of God. And our fellowship with God, this is a theme that God is developing over this now, our third session, our fellowship with God does not earn, earn us anything in God, but is the foundation for us to receive everything that he's made available to us. There are actually rewards because the only currency of the kingdom is faith. It's the only currency of the kingdom. What is faith? You is, we just read it. Faith is simply trusting God. I trust God for this. I trust God for that. And faith, when you put your faith in God, it unlocks what I like to call a window in that area of your life. He teaches this principle in Malachi 3 when he talks about giving. He says... Bring the tithes into the storehouse, and then he says, will I not open up a window? It's a picture of how the kingdom of God operates. You trust God in that area, and then you actually open a window for his in intervention for him to do what he said about that area of your life. Why do you think people who don't, people, you can, you can love God, people who believe that God no longer does miracles, or that miracles are like a lottery, why do you think they don't see a lot of miracles? Because they have not opened up that window of belief in their life. It's not that God is mean. So also very important, God holds us responsible for developing our life of fellowship. We determine our internal world and belief system. But this is really important. Our personal history in God is to birth things in the earth. Great book on this is uh, Derek Prince's book, classic book, Changing History Through Fasting and Prayer. If you talk to certain intercessors, they pray over specific things. We'll talk about this just in a minute. They pray over specific nations. Some of them will tell you, in the spirit, I go there every day in this nation. Why? They're actually changing history. They could be in Wilmington, North Carolina, but they're praying for the Philippines because they have an assignment in that nation. There's different types of intercessors and, 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 and different types of things that people birth in the area of prayer. And I'll just list them out because you may be like this. I remember years ago when I started working with intercessors, I remember this one used to always come to me. Do you have a list? And I'm thinking, what do you need a list for? What do you need a list for? And then I realized that's how she prays. Kind of bothered me a little bit, then I realized that not everyone's like me. It's a big revelation, right? There's list intercessors. There's people who pray for crises. There's salvation intercessors. There's issue intercessors. There's people specifically called. They pray for that abortion issue every day. They're passionate about it. Matt Lockett was here last year, right? That's one of the things he does. He literally got a prayer room right there, and I think... Uh, uh, right where the Supreme Court meets. Financial intercessors, mercy intercessors, warfare intercessors. Now, here's me. This is why I didn't understand the list lady. I'm a worshiper intercessor. Got in the car yesterday. Let's worship the Lord. By the way, that new album that just dropped this week, Lord Jesus. What's that called, Eddie? Oh, my God, Lord Jesus. I got crashed the car on the way to Wilmington. Most of my time with the Lord, I just worship. Mm -hmm. 
governmental intercessors, people who pray. Now, everyone should pray. Why? Because the Apostle Paul prays, says, first of all, pray for all those in authority, whether you like them or not, and whether you're a Republican or Democrat or not. Why? So you can live a peaceable life. So those first things I do every morning, I, I, it didn't matter who the president was. I had to repent because I didn't pray for President Clinton because I didn't like him. I just had a bad thought about him too. So <laughs> save that man. I pray for him. Lord, thank you. Just pray for, you know, one of the things I pray for President Pence, then I go through. I've been praying for months. I don't know why. Don't know anything. Just pray for President Pence's children. Pray for their salvation. No idea where his children are with the Lord. I'll get a little insight every day. It doesn't have to be long. And I pray for Speaker Pelosi. Pray for her daughter. And I pray for Roy Cooper, the governor. And I pray for the city of Dunn. Why? I want to live a peaceable life. And I pray for the state of North Carolina, no matter where I'm at. Lord, I pray for the state of North Carolina. Let, let its redemptive purpose come forward. Let the reformational spirit that you have in this state, let it come forward. But some people, that's a great majority of their, what they're assigned in prayer. Other people, people groups, Israel, prophetic intercessors. So God holds you responsible for developing this area of your life. Philippians 2, verse 12, again, the Apostle Paul speaking. Therefore, my beloved brethren, as you have always believed, not, in, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here's something that no one can do for you, and that is have a relationship with God for you. Our life goal should be to make fellowship with God an established habit, an established habit. Our life goal should be to make fellowship with God an established habit. The reason I use that word habit, because it's this, is this, this is the definition of habit, and it's an acquired pattern of behavior that has become almost involuntary as a result of frequent repetition. That your, your life is so built on that, it's like eating, it's like drinking, it's like anything you do. You don't, it's, it's just part of how you're made. I said this last night, from the time I was 7 to 23, I, I, I wrestled. And one of the things that I had noticed, or as I look back on that time in my life, even when I was 7 years old to the last year I competed... I was practicing some of the same moves I learned at seven years old. And you practice them over and over and over again. Regulation match in college was seven minutes, went over time, maybe 10 minutes. And you practice for hours. Why? Because in a match, they did not want you to have to, th oh, this guy's doing this, so I need to do this. Everything was an established habit and the ability to respond. Even some of the better wrestlers right now, you listen to some talk right now, they'll say, I constantly, what do you do in practice? Well, we're constantly putting ourselves in different positions, so when I get in that position, I know how to react properly. So they actually have to make it part of their belief system, but after a while, they've acted in certain ways. They are simply reacting to the moment and the habit that they have practiced. Think about when you learn how to drive a car. Remember learning how to drive a car? You get in that car, and you know, at least me, I remember to like check both ways and then look back. And... Now you do it, but you're probably not consciously thinking about doing it. Some of you look like you need some prayer when you're driving, but that's the difference. Like you don't look both ways. And... So. As you develop this lifestyle of fellowship, you're just, yes, there's these intentional times, we'll talk about that too, but that you're constantly living, as the Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing. You're constantly, because there's a cadence and there's a rhythm to walking with the Lord. I got up this morning, I could feel it, like, oh, he's in a good mood today. Okay. There's moods, there's rhythms of the Holy Spirit. Developing a habit of fellowship is much like developing muscles in the natural. I remember uh, years ago, 
that, that I still remember that first day. I'm in a dorm room in North Carolina. I said, I'm going to know you. Me and you are going to be, we're going to know each other. And I remember, never really had taken intentional prayer time till that day in my life. Maybe, you know, said a few prayers here and there. And, you know, when you, you first start this, you, you, at least me, I prayed about everything I knew how to pray about. I prayed for a dog that I had when I was seven. You know, I prayed for, like, my uncle that I didn't even like. You know, you just pray for You're like, at least 20 minutes have gone by, and, like, five minutes have gone by. And I remember thinking to myself, how do people talk to you? This is not easy. What happened? Because we're trained, especially in our culture, everything's fast, quick, boom, boom. Even 20 years ago, everything. And so your spirit is desensitized. And so you have to begin to engage that, your, your inner man. And part of that practice, sometimes you know, it takes different amounts of time for people. But you can't do it unless you engage. And yes, you do have to break through that thing, that issue of boredom. Here's another thing, and this is just a life principle. Uh, there will be days when you begin to practice and make this a habit where you don't want to. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't have to be led of the Spirit to talk to the Lord every day. I talk to the Lord because I need Him. I don't need this word like pray today, like I know I need to. Here's another uh, good thing is have a vision for a life of fellowship with God. I've had to upgrade my vision because I used to sit with a cup of coffee. I used to to read, especially the book of Acts years ago, I used to read it, and I used to believe God for angels to come and to interact with him. Now that's starting to happen, so I've had to upgrade my life of fellowship. It's amazing to me that people plan where they're going on vacation. Some people like six months in advance, they got it all planned out. They make sure like they get the best deals, best, you know, flights, you know. Oh, they'll work four hours to get like $20 less on a flight. I can see some of you are like that. (laughs) And they've never sat and developed a vision for a life of fellowship with God the thing that's supposed to be the foundation of everything. So I encourage you, your homework, take some time. Every year. Have one goal every year. I want to know you more. And he's incredibly practical. He'll tell me just small little things. Remember about three or four years ago? He said, you know, every morning you usually get up and go work out. I said, yeah, just do that to kind of wake up, get the body moving. He said, before you do that, let's get into the Word for a few minutes. Now, you can come back, because I would always come back and spend time in prayer, because I'd wake up, and then I'd have my cup of coffee. But it changed the rhythm of my day, just five minutes in the Word. Began to change the rhythm. This year, as I went into it, this past year, going into 2019, he said, I'd like you to worship more. I thought we were worshiping enough. Apparently, his opinion is the only one that matters. Amen. So be intentional. What is intentional? Done with design and purpose. Here's another thing to keep in mind. No matter where you're at and what stage of your life, God knows exactly where you're at and exactly what's going on in your life. He knows you have this kid, this responsibility. This. But here's another thing. If you haven't made this a practice in your life, you may find out that when you begin to practice in your life, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff that God never called you to do. Because you've been trying to take care of yourself. I don't have time for that. You're worn out. I don't know. Really simply, this verse called Matthew 6. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. Not saying everything. Not saying stop everything. But ask the Lord for wisdom. I would never put what God's asked me to do in this area on other people because we're all at different stages in life. But find out what the Lord's required of you. You might start out with 10 minutes. But you also find there's lots of time during the day to talk to God when you're doing other things. Man, I can get in messages just 
getting ready in the morning. I start it in the morning and I finish it at night right before I go to bed and take a shower. Got a whole message in or the Bible in or, you know, you got 10 minutes to go to the next meeting, pray in the Holy Ghost. And sh definitely shut off what you're hearing today in the media, no matter who it's coming from. There is such a thing as fake news. CNN, Fox, they're lying. Exodus 3, then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Notice he's being intentional. He sees that bush. He goes, I'm going to stop right here. This is, this, it, it, this is what I've learned. If we don't make something the primary goal, it will always be secondary. And if you don't make something the primary goal, the enemy will always find something else for you to do. Here's a common one among believers. We're going to try and be there. That means they're not coming. Because God never asked you to try anything. How many this week had some things come up that you go, oh my gosh. I haven't worked on the weekend in seven months, and now they want me to work that weekend. have to be really intentional about these things. I definitely haven't arrived in that one, but I remember a few years ago, coming into the new year, I got the sickest I ever gotten as an adult, and then we had a New Year's thing going into the year. I said, no, 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 you got the wrong guy. I said, I'll crawl into that pulpit. Now, I'm not saying no you isn't, but the Lord didn't tell me to, to cancel. And I'd stand up, grace of God would hit me, I'd sit down, and I'd feel bad again. Going to my hotel <laughs> But you got the wrong guy. You, this is what we, they're like, what do you feel? I said, this is what you sign up for. Amen. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Consistent means fixed, not moved. Make it your goal. One of my goals is, and obviously we're all in different stages of development. Psalm 112, his heart is steadfast and is not moved. God, the Western church needs steadfast people. I thank God the way I grew up. If I ever chose to serve the devil or the world system, it would have been my choice. My parents put God first. I remember hearing our pastor, he would stand up in our Assembly of God church, he would say, so-and-so's coming. I never liked when Brother Kruger came because he wanted everyone to speak in tongues. You don't understand it as a little kid, you know. Evangelist so-and-so is coming to town. He'll be here Sunday through Wednesday. When I was really young, they'd be there all week. Both my parents worked. They didn't choose one night to come. They would mark it on the calendar. You used to think you'd get out of it if they had, like, you know, parent-teacher night. Oh, no, no. They'd go to parent-teacher night, then we were in church. And then when it was bedtime, then she would just bring, I still remember, she'd bring me to the, the bathroom, change me into my jammies, put a pillow, go, this is where you're sleeping tonight. Some of it was a little religious, yes, but they were committed to the things of the Lord. Especially they honored the word of their leader. They said, we'd like you to be here because you're in leadership. Amen. Not saying you need to be in church every night of the week. I'm certainly not suggesting that. But often I hear people, and God is added to their life. Well, we're going to the beach this weekend. <laughs> you live at the beach, a little different. But we're going to the mountains. Oh, our, our Aunt Sonia's coming into town, so we're having brunch with her on Sunday morning. And if, if they don't have anything else going on, they'll make it. Here's another one. Persistence to continue steadfast in purpose, course of action, in spite of opposition or criticism. 
or last or endure tenaciously. Do you know often what we call radical, God's just like, no, that's just normal. I commend you because I believe, and I do it for myself. These are the ministers of the gospel. I will intentionally set aside times to come and listen to teaching, be involved in ministry, and I'll sit there because I'm a disciple first before I'm ever a minister of the gospel. Here's the really good news. The Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit are 100% committed to the purposes of God being established in your life. They're all in. They've given you all the power to do it. I'm telling you, God, I, I, I'm not one of those people who, who goes on three hours of sleep. Although the older I get, I don't need as much sleep. I don't know what's going on there. But, but you know what I found? The more free you get in God, you don't need as much sleep. Demons like to knock you out for the count. <laughs> little demonology there. They do, true. But sometimes I'll just ask the Lord, Lord, wake me up in about four hours so I can spend a little time with you before I get onto the airport. He'll do it. In four hours, you just, boom, you're up. You're like, ooh, ooh, thank you, Jesus. Because <laughs> he, said, he said it. As much as you want to spend time with him, he's like, let's do this. And there is no formula. It's, it's like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Now, here's a big one. Many people, and we've been emphasizing this, though. Uh, look at Matthew 11. This is important here. Verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So I want to say something that might offend you. If you get burned out, it's because you're in unbelief and not trusting the Lord. Not saying you don't get tired. I'm not saying your body doesn't get physically tired. I'm not saying sometimes you don't feel overwhelmed. But if you get in a state where you want to give up, it's because you are not putting your burden on the Lord. It's a big one. Big one, not just for leaders, but for every person in this room. Even if you're going through fi family situations, you've never been created to be the Messiah in your family or for anyone else. And if you, if you have this need to be wanted, people, they'll pull on that. Oh, you need to come here right now, pray for me. You, know, and you, you do that deliverance thing, you know, just come now, pray. I need your help right now. He says, come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 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 That doesn't mean inactivity. It's just you're, 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 you're not on this like hamster wheel. Amen. Take my yoke upon you, and th this is why I'm reading this. Because you have to have this exchange, and sometimes I got to do it almost every because you'll, I'll get up in the morning, and you, your brain starts going, you got this going on, got that going on, you got to fly out. And I go, you know, the good news is my shoulders are not big enough to handle that one. You were never big enough to handle everything in your life. That's why he gave you himself. So anytime I feel overwhelmed, pressured, I know I've put something on myself that God never told me to put on myself. And it's a little more challenging for type A people because we're going to get the job done, we're going to get the job done. But eventually, when you really walk with the Lord, you're so far off that boat, you can't even do it in your own strength. I can't produce certain things that I need for our ministry on a monthly basis. I can't produce it in my own strength. Not, I'm not that good. But he's really good. I will give you rest. But notice he says, take my yoke upon you. That means you actually have to receive it. You actually have to take it. Take my yoke upon you, and this is why this is so important. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest 
for your souls. Excuse me, I, what, I missed that phrase, the most important. Take my yoke upon you, and then he says, learn from me. Learn from me. So often, part of this is our approach to God is that we actually have to hand over things to him. Sometimes you got to do it 15 times a day. Serious. What are you going to do about that? Oh, this is all disaster. I give this over to you. It's not mine to handle. Give this over to you. And Lord, if there's anything that I have to do in that area, you show me, but I'm giving this over to you. It's not my problem. Not this, not that. It's not my problem. Now, I pray for my unsaved relatives every day. Sometimes I call them out by name. But I will not take the burden of their poor choices on, on me. Not my problem. My obligation is to stand in the gap. My obligation is to love them when they're in front of me. I cannot get them saved, no matter how much I want them saved. But here's another part. When we hold on to that so much, you actually often inadvertently hold the hand of God back from their life. Here's what Peter said. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 and 7. Casting all, not some, all your care upon him. Why do you want to cast your care upon him? Because he cares for you. See, so cast it on him, there's this divine exchange. He can't care for you unless you cast it upon him. He's like, oh, I'd like to help you with that, but you're holding on to it. So you want to, you want to approach God in that way. Lord, I just hand this over to you. Give you this, give you this. Give, I give you my son. Give you my daughter. Give you this work situation. I trust you. I trust you, God. I know that you're good. I know that you're going to take care of this. And you'll feel, ooh, ooh, ooh. And you almost feel like you're responsible. You'll, like, you'll leave and you'll go, that's not my problem. <laughs> you'll take care of it. <laughs> Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. So be intentional, be persistent, ask God for wisdom. Maybe you just start with, you know, instead of listening to the morning drive, just put on some worship music on the way to work. Pray Psalm 91 before you get in that car, though. A lot of nutsos out there. There is. I remember years ago, going to um, the Brownsville Revival. One of the reasons I went that week, it was during a time they were doing a conference every week and they were doing it in the Bible college and then they have the revival uh, meetings at night. But I chose to go to this particular conference because Michael Brown, Dr. Michael Brown was speaking that week, but Suzette Hedding was speaking that week. And the reason I wanted to go hear Suzette Hedding speak was because I knew this woman spent hours with the Lord. Put yourself in environments like that. I don't remember much of what she said, but in her South African accent, she said, most of my time with the Lord is spent in worship. I think I was like 19 years old. I'm thinking, what'd she just say? Like, I don't know, 600 people in the room, and I'm thinking, I didn't know you could worship I didn't know that was part of prayer. So back then, I bought every live tape there was. And that's how I learned how to talk to the Lord. For an extended period of time. I prayed from one end to another. I just worshiped the Lord. I still got it today. I still got a lot of that music right on my iPad. You can just, boom, it's there. So you can worship the Lord. Take time to worship. There's so many things out there. YouTube, you can just listen to worship, live worship. If you don't know what to do, just lift your hands and say, Father, I just commit this next time to you and I just worship, and just worship right along with those songs. Worship the Lord. I learned the voice of God through worship. Take the scripture, meditate on it. 
you're struggling through a situation. Whatever it is, whatever area of your life, there's a verse that will cover whatever you're walking through. You have an unsafe child. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Repeat back to God what he said about you. I did it this morning. I just, go, I just go through the prophecies over my life. Lord, thank you that the favor of God is on me, the favor of God surrounds me, and I have not yet touched the favor, the door, that favor, the, 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 the doors have yet to open that favor will open for me. Thank you that you open doors to kings and presidents and leaders. Thank you that I'm a brilliant teacher of the word. The spirit of wisdom and revelation comes on me. What am I doing? I'm agreeing with God. Lord, I just come into agreement with that. When, it, when, you, when you say, if you feel like this little, well, you don't really think that. Now, that might just be feelings, but there also might be something in your belief system that prevents you from fully receiving that. So meditate on the word. Repeat back to God what he said about you. We know that Jesus himself came into alignment with the prophecies over his life. How much more do you? It is pride not to receive and declare what God has said about you. Sounds, well, you know, I just, you know, I'm a, you know it doesn't sound like me. You're in a different family, honey. Well, that just doesn't sound right. No, it's right. You're wrong. <laughs> Take time to listen. There's rhythms in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. I, sometimes I'll just sit there. Last few, about a week and a half, the Lord was like, yeah, you've gotten a little too forward. Let's just sit here and talk for the next week. Oh, okay. Let's just rest a little bit. You and me, let's just talk. So I just... Sometimes I just do, I lay on my bed because it helps me focus more. Just boom. Oh, I'll talk to you. Whoa. Now, big one where you begin to learn his voice is where you, you make this commitment. As long as it's you, I will do whatever you ask me to do. This is where, this is where, this is where the adventure starts. Oh, Lord Jesus. Never, ever say again, I, don't, I can't hear his voice. Why, I have such trouble hearing his voice. Why, death and life are in the power of your tongue. He gives us this great statement in the Gospel of John. Those who desire to do my will will know that my doctrine is from God. What's he saying? If you want to really know his voice, he's going to tell you. He will make it absolutely clear. When your heart is positioned that way. But where the voice of God is consistently silent, maybe there's not an obedient ear. So I was talking about this morning. The blessing of Abraham is yours, but also you've got to have the faith of Abraham. You want me to, I, mean, remember, I remember when I first started on it, I said, what? That's not right. No, no, this is right. Then he always hit me with this one. I thought you said you'd do whatever I asked you to do. Because I've learned, I'm not perfect, but it gets real uncomfortable talking to him for more than 24 hours after he's asked me to do something that I haven't done. <laughs> or at least not move in that direction. Sometimes I can't finish it all, but you, you know, you, you're like, I worship you. He's like, please do this for me. No, I'll do it, do it, do it. Yeah, yeah. Right. No. Please do this. There's such freedom, too. I remember uh, years ago, haven't asked the Lord this in a while. I used to do it almost at least once a week. I said, is there something I'm, that I need to do that I haven't done? Oh, he'll start talking. He said, you know this guy you used to, this is like years after. He goes, you know this guy you used to live with in graduate school? I want you to call him and repent of this. Sometimes you weren't a very good example of what it means to follow me. I said, I think I was a good roommate. He did not agree with me. 
So being the obedient servant of the Lord, I waited at least a week. That was an uncomfortable week talking to the Lord. I didn't talk to this guy in years. But I knew where he worked. I said, I'm going to get rid of this feeling. I didn't quite get that fully right because sometimes you can be obedient but not really willing. I did it, but my heart wasn't all in it. And I want to be obedient and willing so I can eat of the good of the land. You know, like, fine, I'll give the $500. Just shut up. Yeah, you did it, but you weren't willing. I've been there. I'm just telling you, man. You know, tell, you, tell you the truth. Shame the devil, you know. <laughs> so I called him up. And he goes, you know, I was just about to leave work. I said, well, praise the Lord. You know, so we catch up. For a few minutes, and then I go, you know, he's kind of, you can kind of feel it. Why is this guy calling me? I said, you know, I just want to repent to you that I wasn't the best example sometimes when I lived with you as a roommate. He goes, man, you were one of the best roommates I ever had over the years. I said, I thought so too. God did not agree. (laughs) But his opinion is the only one that matters. But I remember when I hung up the phone that day, Something shifted in the spirit in my life in the area of relationships that I was never the same again. He'll tell you stuff. And he'll, in different seasons of life, he'll relate to you differently. I'll give you an example. This is the way the Lord showed me years ago. My sister and I have a great relationship with my dad, but my dad relates to us differently. She's a year and a half older than me. So there's a, a different season of life. He, like, when I first started on this journey, it would, like, he would like scream things to me. Like, do this! You know, because I probably would have dismissed it. Now he just goes, please do this. Can you do this? And I remember like I would sit in the... He asked me to do something in January, and I'm like in the front row on this teaching thing. And then um, I said, do you really want to? Yes! So I've kind of learned. He likes you to listen and obey quickly. But as soon as you know, he holds you responsible for what you know. So there's rhythms, and you'll learn that as you're engaging with the Lord on a daily basis, emphasize what the Holy Spirit is emphasizing. What do I mean by that? Uh, Let's just back up for a moment. I encourage everyone in this room to develop a Bible study reading plan. Right now, I'm going through the New Testament, and for probably the last three years, I'm reading Daniel over and over and over again. Most people don't read as much of the scripture as they think, as they, think they do. They don't have a plan. But I get caught up sometimes for days at a time in one chapter or one verse. The last four days, one of my go-tos is the Sermon on the Mount. I read it over and over again. I read in book, so I kind of took a detour. But I know that's what the Holy Spirit is emphasizing, and I read it over and over and over again. The challenge is, so even if you have a plan, you can stay in, you know, give me an example, Ephesians 3, just stay there. The problem is, a lot of times, people don't let roots and foundations go deep inside of them. And here's one of the challenges of having so much revelation available to us. You know, one week they got prophetic training. Awesome, all good stuff. So that, you know, that person like, I'm a prophet now, I'm going to prophesy, prophesy the paint off the walls. The next week they have evangelism training, so now they're going to be an evangelist. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. But when you're hungry, sometimes you have to distinguish what God is emphasizing. Sometimes even when I'm listening to things, or, or I'll say, oh, I got like 30 minutes in the car. What do you want me to listen to? And I'll think like, 
Why do you want me to listen to that? And they'll say one phrase in the teaching that I needed to hear that was relevant to what God is emphasizing. So the reason I say that, when God is on a subject in your life, don't change it. Doesn't mean you don't listen to other things. It's just stick in that. Let that truth. It's not that you'll ever arrive, but let that thing go deep, 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 deep. I'm still listening to something from 10 years ago from a conference I was at because the Lord, when I was listening to the speaker, he said, you need exactly what he's saying, and I need you to listen to this over and over and over and over again. Still learning things. Here's another one we talked about yesterday. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Don't be ashamed to pray in tongues. Do not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm not purposely ever trying to weird people out, but I just pray in the Spirit so much. Sometimes I'll be running on the treadmill. I remember one time running on the treadmill, a little room, and I'm praying in the Spirit as I run, and the lady walks right out. I said, oh, I forgot I was praying in the Spirit. I'm normal. She's not. <laughs> Pray in the Spirit all the time. And here's the last one. If you really want to accelerate this thing, add fasting. Add fasting. Fasting obviously doesn't earn you anything in God, but it changes you on the inside. I found it accelerates. You really want to grow in the knowledge of God. Here's something I didn't realize until about four months ago. I think I was 23 or 24 years old. The Lord asked me a question. He said, would you live a lifestyle of prayer and fasting? I thought he was asking me to. I said, I didn't really want to because I liked eating. I did. And for much of my life, because I did wrestle, I was constantly watching my weight, and I knew what it was like to diet, and you know, at the end of college, I took this survey, I had every symptom of an eating disease, or an eating disorder. Why? Do you check your weight often? Yes. Do you think about eating certain things when you can't? Yes. So the idea of purposely not eating stuff anymore was not very attractive to me. But I said, Lord, if this is what you're asking me to do, I'm going to do it. You know, about four months ago, the Lord said to me, and so I've endeavored to do that. I'll tell you in a minute, good thing I learned. He said to me, he goes, you know, when I said that to you, I was asking you if you would do it. I wasn't telling you to do it. He goes, but I'm sure glad you said yes, because it's really developed some things inside of you. So carry on. See, sometimes they'll just throw things out to you that you're not saying you don't have to do this, but they'll transform your life if you'll lean into it. But years ago, I got to spend some time with a great prophet of the Lord. He lives not too far from here. And he was a man of fasting and prayer. He actually wrote a great book, Fasting and Prayer, Dr. Kingsley Fletcher. I actually saw him in May when I was flying to Israel. And he said to me, he, he, he taught, there was a, little, a group of us young guys at the time, we were at his helm, excuse me, and he said, most people try and like fast like 20 days, 40 days, and nothing wrong with that. He said, but they don't spend most of the time really fasting and prayer. They got all these things going on. He said, if you can find one, two, three days where, where you can really focus on fat, fasting and praying especially during times you would eat, he goes, I have found great breakthrough. And I applied it. Every year, the Lord will give me a little different strategy on how to do that. Right now, I'm on a certain track right now. And then someday, I mean, he, you, you can't do this one, I mean, you know, you can't do this one in your own strength. Remember way back, 15 years ago, you know, I, I'm not going to eat anything until I get breakthrough in this area. Like two hours into it, you're like, I want a bucket of chicken. <laughs> I haven't eaten chicken and I don't even like fried chicken, but I want chicken. <laughs> and the Lord will go, hey, I want you to fast these two, three days. And there's such grace. Not that you're not hungry, but there's grace to do what God's asked you to do. 
Sometimes it didn't make sense to me. It was like Tuesday or Wednesday. And then three days down the line, you're like, oh, that's what was going on there. He'll tell you. And then I was on this track, and then a few weeks, right the week before our conference, I was thinking, well, okay, I'll take a day, you know. He goes, the work's been done. I'd like you to rest this week. Just listen to the Lord. He'll show you how to do it. And he'll give you the grace to do it. Those who seek to do his will will know how to do it. So we'll land these plans with a few things and we'll pray for everyone here. Here's some fruits of a life of fellowship with God. You'll be filled with the Spirit. Don't be drunk with wine, Ephesians 5, but allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit. And there's a thing about being filled with the Spirit. There's not just tongues, but there's diversity of tongues. I talked a little bit about last night. You got one tongue, shekebuka, sakama, and then you sokobu. You just, you get that diversity. When you spend time, fruit of having a lifestyle fellowship is tongues and more tongues. And I just say, let them roll how they come out. Sometimes you're like, and then it's other shekebo hayama. You gotta get, you gotta, you gotta let it go out as the Lord is flowing through you. Diversity of tongues. Paul talked about it. A lifestyle, a fellowship with God will give you an understanding of the timing and the seasons of God. I'm a per- and here's another thing. You get to ask God questions as his friend. I'm a person of a million questions. I ask God all sorts of questions. Why is this person acting this way? Why this? And sometimes he says, it's none of your business. Other times he gives me insight. Seriously. I said, what's wrong with this person, God? It's none of your business. Love him. But I remember one time I was asking him how I was going to do something. How, do, how am I going to do this? And he helped me. He helped me so well. He said, he said, everything you need to know, when you need to know it, I'll let you know as long as you stay in fellowship with me. Boom. Yes, sir. And then I got a little nervous. Not nervous, but you know, you get jumpy. You got this vision from the Lord. I had lunch with my pastor one day, and I showed him my great vision. I'm a man of vision. And he looked at my thing at the end of lunch. He was not very impressed. He gave it back to me and he said, the Lord wants you to know everything you need to know. When you need to know, you'll, you'll know if you just keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. So you'll know timing and seasons. You don't have to try and make whatever the Lord's asked you to do. Just, just stay that path. But also be open that there's going to be some detours, there's going to be some turns when you're following him. You're going to get on some highways you don't intend to get on that make you uncomfortable. We've never been this way before, is the motto of the kingdom. People who live a lifestyle of a fellowship with God have profound vision for their life. You know, worship, I always say worship is my creative space. Have all these thoughts. When I'm worshiping, I just, and God, the Holy Spirit is incredibly practical. You know, I'll be just worshiping, and he gets, I used to think I was getting distracted, and it's God giving me insight into my life. Call this person, do this. I'm like, I'm trying to worship Jesus. <laughs> but he's your helper in life. So just get that pen out and write it. He can take care of that, you know. And I'll call, oh, I was just thinking about you. And I hadn't thought about them in months until I started worshiping the Lord. I was work, work, working through something this week. I'm on the treadmill this week, and I get this picture of how to <laughs> figure out this travel schedule for the, boom, got it. It was from the Lord. He said, do this, 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 boom, it was done. Wow. Worship's your creative space. You put him first, he'll give you wisdom. Where there's no revelation, the people of God perish. People who live a lifestyle fellowship of fruit is it that God shares with them secrets. 
God is looking for people that he can share secrets with in the earth, ideas for businesses, ministries, cities, regions, and nations, solutions for crimes, for in- incarceration. Matthew 13, 11, because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Good prayer to pray, God, if there's, some, if there's someone in the earth that needs to know some, uh, if there's someone in the earth that needs to be told something, I'm your man or woman. Let me know. But then be ready to do something about it. And finally, people who live a life of fellowship encounter God on a daily basis. Do you know, uh, for many, many years, that's why I'm prefacing what I'm going to share here in a minute. For many years, I would experience the manifest presence of God. I experienced the presence of the Lord with me, but I didn't really have these, what many people refer to as mystical experiences. But as I stewarded that year after year after year, about six years into it, I began to have some very interesting encounters with the Lord. I'll tell you about a few of them. I remember one time I was on, uh, I was laying on my bed. I had a, a, like this, int- I don't know how to describe it. Uh, it was a small little bed, but I'm worshiping the Lord. I'm listening to worship music, and suddenly I go into this experience where I, I literally come out of my body, and I can see my body, it's on the bed, but I'm going into the heavenly places and I go into this other dimension for just a minute. And as soon as I had this, I can see myself on the body and I go into like this heavenly place because your spirit can go lots of places your body can't. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I remember that, I believe that was the first time I went into heaven. I think that day I heard the sounds of heaven for the first time. That's why sounds are so important to me, because they're very important to what's taking place in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. Prophecy is not just words, but it's also sounds. And then I began to go to, I don't know if it was actually heaven, but I'd go to these rooms in the spirit. I remember one day, I think it was like a year or two, my first two years of ministry, I was kind of tired, and I'm hanging out with Jesus. We're in this cliff, and honestly, in my mind, I'm thinking, is this real? And Jesus takes water and just, oh, that felt good. It refreshed me. Some of my most profound encounters have been with, I don't know if I'll tell you both of them, but at least one of them from the great cloud of witnesses. I was... uh, Um, uh, probably 13 years ago, maybe 14, I was listening to Mike Bickle teach, and he said, um, some of you are going to be drawn to the lives of generals to study them because God has something in their lives that he wants to reveal to you. And I remember when I heard that, I said, that's the word of the Lord. So I asked the Lord, See, God will often throw these phrases out and just throw them out to you to see what you'll do with them. Wow. Like, you going to inquire of me with that one? It's an invitation. Some people go, oh, wasn't that nice? And they don't actually realize it was an invitation to define a p- part of their life. And uh, so I said, Lord, who, who's that for me? Because I knew it was the word of the Lord for me. He said, Oral Roberts. So I began to read every book I could get on on Oral Roberts still to this day. Just was reading about his life. And he was still alive when I began to read about his life. And I had heard that he was... I heard that he was allowing ministers to come to his home. He was you know, at home in California. And he would teach them about his life. I think they spend the day with him, then he laid hands on him. And I didn't know how I could get in that group, but I began asking the Lord, open a door, open a door. Yeah, I, I just feel like I want to receive, 
I want him to lay hands on me. There's something about his life I don't quite fully understand, but I know that the Lord has something for me through his life. And then he passed away. He didn't pass away. He transitioned, really. I understand the story is this, too, that on the last day he was on the earth, he was not doing well physically, and Richard, his son, obviously, comes into his hospital room, and he's worshiping the Lord, and Richard says to him, Dad, you're not doing too well, but you're worshiping, because he goes, yes, the Lord has told me I have finished my task on the earth, and he's bringing me home. That's a good way to finish. left the earth. I think Robert Slayerton says in, it's in the billions of dollars that Brother Roberts raised for the cause of the gospel before he left the earth. Through building ORU, through his gospel crusades. You know, at one time he was on CBS every night on prime time. And you know what used to get people really mad is that he would say something good is going to happen to you. And it wasn't unbelievers who got mad at that. People, how can you say something's good or a miracle's going to happen for you? He used to get mad because he said nice things, truthful things. Brilliant life. If all we know him as a miracle evangelist, you could stop there. You can even YouTube today some of his clips of the anointing on that man. Sometimes he would preach for two hours and then he would pray for the sick. You'd see goiters just go in the name of Jesus. Brother Copeland tells a story of uh, when he, was, he would have a, 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 um, a whole line of people or a whole group of people that come with um, terminal diseases and they'd have to listen and one of uh, Brother Copeland's jobs when he worked for Brother Roberts was to kind of uh, give a synopsis of his message. And then he would come over and pray for them after he finished his message. He said, he was like his first or second day where they asked him to do this. And he said, there was a lady with cancer, riddled with cancer. And he, Brother Roberts looked at, at Brother Colby and said, you're going to pray for her. You're going to pray for them today. And he's thinking, what? This is all Roberts. And he said, and he told them, he said, don't lay hands, listen to this, if you're going to pray for people tonight, don't lay hands on them until you're ready to release your faith. He's looking at this woman riddled with cancer. And he said, he began to pray, and he said, he heard like a lion of the tribe of Judah come from uh, Brother Roberts. He said, I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit. And he said, the thing just went, whoosh, this whole thing came out of the woman. She's completely healed right there. Wow. He had one of the biggest tents, and he was one of the first to innovate. He brought the cameras inside the tent. He had the city of faith. You know, one of the big things he got criticized for, because he was, one of the things he was raising money, I think he needed a million dollars or 11 million, I forget what it was, because he found out after starting this medical school that a lot of his, he, he had created the medical school so he'd go on the mission field, but he found a lot of them were so saddled with debt, what he was endeavoring to do was pay off all their loans so they could go on the mission field. But he was this great evangelist. He was the first one to bring the cameras in the tent. My mom went to his meetings in Puerto Rico. She said, I'd never seen anything like that. Wow. But the Lord told them to start this university. And he bought a plot of land that, no, that the people, his friends would tell him, what are you doing? You're this great man. Why are you going to do this? Because the Lord told me. And he'd walk those ground. He put all of his money into, he put his money where his mouth is, into that land. And he'd walk the land, and he'd pray in the spirit, and God would go, this is where the student center is going to be. This is where this is going to be. And he'd, go, he'd get the interpretation through tongues. A brilliant man. His legacy is at university. He's left the earth, but what he did is still in the earth. So obviously, I have some profound appreciation for his life. I was a little disappointed when he transitioned. But 
One day I was with a group of leaders, and I remember I was on the right side of this auditorium in High Point, and I just felt from the Lord to just lay down. We're having this intimate time with the Lord. I think it's within a year of when he died. And as soon as I lay down, I go into this vision. And in this vision, I'm in this, first thing I see is this, I see this farmhouse on this flat land. I now understand it because I've gone to Oklahoma. I hadn't gone at that time. Oklahoma's flat, most of it. And there's a farmhouse. And you know, when you're in these things in the spirit, the next thing I know, I'm in the farmhouse and Oral sitting at that table. Now listen to me carefully. I'm not suggesting you call up dead people. New agers do that. But I am suggesting that as the will of the Lord leads, he will, he will open these doors of experience to you. Why? Because they're not dead. But he's the one who initiates it, not us. I wasn't asking to see Oral Roberts. But he's at the table. I just want to make that really clear, especially since it's going around the world. And the next thing I know, He's laying hands on me in this dream, in this encounter. He said, go further than I've ever gone. <laughs> Experience ended. Wow. I didn't ask for it, but I'm way open to whatever God has. Remember, six years ago, just worshiping the Lord, you know how it is, mind your own business, and suddenly it was like, I'm right in the throne room of God, and Jesus is on the throne, and he didn't give me any great revelation about my ministry. You know what he told me? This is probably 2019, almost eight years ago. He looks at me, he goes... I don't ever want you to worry about money again. I said, I didn't think I was worrying. But apparently he's always right. But I was right in the throne room. It was so beautiful. He's on the throne. Two more stories. I have a bunch. But... July of 2013, I'd gone to Africa for the first time and um, did this pastors and leaders conference for another man. He'd been like 38, 39 years in ministry. He actually spent a lot of time with Bob Jones. So he's telling me these Bob Jones stories. We, we were, you know, every breakfast would kind of resume our talks. So it just stirred, a wise man walks with wise men. Some of you need to get different friends. Serious. And so it like stirred this thing in me, just a greater, God, I need to see you. I want to know you. To just, you know, day to go, I'll go shopping. I'm like, I'm just going to spend some time with the Lord. That's another thing about walking with the Lord. You don't have to be strange, but there'll be times you'll just feel this invitation to get away. No, I can't do that right now. The king has summoned me. Amen. And um, so I just stirred. I'm hungry. I go home and, you know, then I start praying more. Lord, so I'm like a week, you know, then I'm like, then I get, start getting introspective. By the way, you don't have to dig these things up. If you stay in relationship with him, he'll show you. You don't have to constantly look at yourself. You can, can get very strange if you do that. But I, you know, you're just trying. Lord, if I've done anything wrong, please forgive me. Lord, I just want to see you. I want to see you more. So I'm in my parents' house getting ready to minister in New Jersey about a week and a half later. I'm praying. Get ready for the meeting. Jesus comes in the room. He comes in. He anoints my ears, my eyes. He says, you are worthy to receive. 
when I stood up to minister that night, it was in a very small church, but it was filled that night from about boat post. And when I looked up, I'd always sensed, I could always kind of know they're behind people, but I saw angels. Not only that, I saw Jesus. Then I had to distinguish if it was Jesus or the angels. And from that day forward, my, I thought, does everyone see this? And I remember right after that, I went to Moldova, and you know, you do your best to pray for people, minister to them, give them everything God has for them. And I'm in this tent, and I'm wondering if I did my best, or, and I see Jesus over there, and he's got the big thumbs up to me. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. So I think sometimes people say, think I'm speaking by faith. I'm not. I actually see Jesus in the room many times. But I got to distinguish between the angels and Jesus. And many times when I'm praying for people, that's why I'll, I'll, I'm just watching what the angels are doing and I'm following that. Because he's, he's got it all figured out. And it's much more powerful that way. But you know, that was awesome. That was the fruit of that. But the real fruit was I thought I knew how kind he was. That day I realized I had really very little concept of how much he loved me and other people. I remember what he said. He said, you are worthy to receive. That was July. I have it written down here. July 13th, 2003. Two years later, going into New Year's, say that because he comes, Jesus will come in all different sorts of ways. By the way, I'm going to overtime, but I think you can handle it. There's an anointing here. By the way, I don't think you came for an afternoon session for a sermonette. I'm in Spring Valley, California, which is outside of uh, San Diego. I'm there for a New Year's service. Quite honestly, I'm not having very many spiritual thoughts. I'm actually thinking because they just did like this fellowship thing and now they're worshiping. But you can just feel people are tired and I'm kind of a little ticked off because I think the worship has gone too long. I got this word from the Lord for New Year's. So I'm sitting like right here and Jesus comes to me. This time he had a message for me. Yeah, he had a word for me on New Year's. I look at my notes this week, what he told me. He's always kind, but sometimes he's very stern. He said, you're my prophet. Oh, really? No, I'm serious, that's what I thought. And he said to me, I'm releasing a river of revelation that will hold you responsible for sharing with the body of Christ. Then he left. I had to go minister after that. And then I started driving home from the meeting to where I was staying. I still remember this. And I remember because he hears everything you ask him. For years, and I'd stopped praying it. I forgot I even prayed the prayer. I'd asked, I told the Lord, I would like, I like New Year's. By the way, come be with us two nights into the New Year's in Raleigh. We'll have a video tonight. We invite you to come. I love being with the people of God on New Year's. Something about the New Year. It's great. You get to celebrate the New Year twice, September and the end of the year. And I remembered, and I said to the Lord, I said, I forgot I prayed that prayer. He goes, I never forget the prayers you pray. I was asking the Lord for years. I said, I'd like this visitation on New Year's. It'd be really cool if you just come. Like, real powerful. I know you always speak to me, but like, big time stuff. He goes, I never forget the prayers you pray. So I answered your prayer tonight. New Year's 2015. When I finish my last book, and sometimes I see it now when I'll sit there and just study and just write on my, often just see this angel just standing right there. 
Usually I don't talk to him, but I usually ask, because I, I usually just ask the Lord, I said, what's he here doing? He said, oh, that's an angel of revelation for you. He's helping you. We don't worship angels, but we do want to discern how to cooperate with what they've come to do. I don't just see him too in ministry times. I see him when I remember I was flying somewhere. I was like, I thought to myself, this is a long trip. And there was an angel with me. And it just put me at peace that I knew God was protecting me. And I don't have full language for it, but I do know this. That when you step into these encounters, it's like the door for you to experience and see that on a regular basis is unlocked to you. Forget where I was in the last few weeks, but I was just sitting in, oh, it was uh, Monday night. I was in Oklahoma, getting ready to minister. And I forget what I said to the Lord. But Jesus came in the room and he stuck his hand right in me and went, boom! And I screamed out. I thought they, they thought maybe I was murdering someone in the hotel room. Because in the spirit is just as real as what we experience in life. Think of, think of Matthew 18. Yeah, it's more, actually more real, actually, yeah. The unseen realm determines what happens in the seen realm. What does he tell us? Give you one spiritual principle, one biblical principle to this. Where two or more agree, then he says this statement, touching any one thing. You can actually touch things in the spirit. That's why he says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm not saying you're going to have an encounter with Jesus but often they happen in my meetings, or you'll have an encounter with Oral or the great cloud of witnesses. I'm just saying, there are rooms specifically reserved for you that in your intentionality and in your persistence, they're your inheritance for eternity. A lot of times they have to do with your assignment, your purpose, your calling. Ever since that day, six years ago, my ability to minister has increased. Has never, I'll tell you one more. Yes, sir. I felt like you wanted me to tell you this. April. April. Had another upgrade. I go, I said this last night, wouldn't lie to you. Go every year, somewhere, some sort of deliverance or inner healing, just to, I believe that you don't just go to counselors when something's wrong. Let me just leave it there. I want to make sure everything's working and incorrect. So I heard about this ministry, and they actually created this thing during the week so I could go. They're usually on the weekends. So it's Easter Sunday. I come in, I'd minister on a Friday night outside of town. I came home, I was doing some things. I knew I had the next three weeks, I was gone a lot, so I had to take care of some things after I went to a sunrise service. And I feel like when I fly a lot, sometimes your ears get stuck, but I feel this tension being released off my head. I believe it was Monday, the Lord shows me this incident that I had as a child. It wasn't, you would never think that would, you know, just a common thing that happens with kids. He says, when this happened, this came into your life. So I go to this retreat, sit in front of these people I never met, and they go, this. I said, yep. Whatever you see, I'm in agreement. As soon as they prayed for me, 
boom, it's like my ears got popped. And a whole nother level of seeing came on me. One that I didn't necessarily invite. Now I see all sorts of things on people that I wasn't planning on seeing because my ability to see the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God clears your eyes to see so you can minister. The fear of the Lord. What's the fear of the Lord? I take God seriously. I believe you're here today because you take God seriously in every area of life. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Do you know, 23 years ago, I came into college on an athletic scholarship. When I left, I had some of the highest grades. Do you know what made me smart? The spirit of wisdom and revelation. God will make your mind brilliant when you walk with him. Because the Holy Spirit is incredibly practical. Amen. Would you like to receive what God has for you today? If you would just stand to your feet. God's already here. I'm going to invite you to come forward here in just a moment. But here's what I want you to do before you come. Before you come, I just want you to once again just posture your heart. Obviously, I'm just the mailman, but I know there's a dimension of encounter that God is releasing all across this room and even people watching on this webcast. I want you to just posture your heart that you're making a fresh commitment to walk in fellowship with him. That by the grace of God, in your weakness, you'll go, God, I want to serve you all the days of my life. You might have made it hundreds of times, but there's a fresh grace. God's not looking to the next great evangelist, healing apostle. He's just looking for people who will be his friends in the earth. Because he shares his secrets with his friends. And there's a door of encounter open for every person in this room and an upgrade in the spirit for every person to be who God intends them to be. It's just going to count to three and if you just say, Lord, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with that. just want you to come forward after I count to three. We'll do it together because we need each other. There's not a singular pursuit. It's a Corporate pursuit of the purposes of God. One, two, three, just come. Whoa. Kamaya ya bosaya mama maya mama ya. Hey. Pastor Willie, is it possible just to move this aside? It's right in the middle here. This thing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, God. Yeah. Hmm. Just right in the middle here, there's just like this cloud of fire. Lord, we just welcome that cloud of fire. More, Lord. More, Lord. Oh, Lord, just increase your presence. I'm just going to count to three. I'm just going to encourage you just to lift your hands because it'll feel like some of you just put your hands in a cloud of fire. One, two, three, just lift your hands. Whoa. Ooh. Increase your power. Increase your presence. Hey me, yeah, 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 yeah,
wind of God. I just saw like this angel just, whew, just breathe. whoa, breathe this presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. More, Lord. More, Lord. Well, Father, I believe as you've directed me, I just say increase your power. Let the, let the lightnings of God and the electricity of God. Lord, just thank you for the rain of God in this room. Thank you for the rain of God. Thank you for the rain of God and the fire of God and the wind of God. Como yo, 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 yo. Increase your power. Father, I ask for now an apostolic grace to fall upon your people. An apostolic grace to fall upon your people. Lord, let it be like Jesus himself, laying hands upon your people, releasing to people everything that they would need. Increase your power, Holy Spirit. Lord, you know what your people need, so just increase your power. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Mama, mama, mosho, koboyo. Hoyo, mo, hoyo, bo, hoyo. Como, mo, mo, yo. Hey! Whoa! 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 Come help pray for people if you would. Como hoyo bohoyo. Como yo yo bohoyo boso koboyo. Power! Power of God. Power of God. Power. Como yo 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 yo. Someone would walk with Paul. He's praying for. Hey! Whoa! Woo! Breakthrough power. Breakthrough power. Breakthrough power. Breakthrough power. Breakthrough power is your portion. Momohoyo mosokoboyo. There's a door into the beauty of the Lord. You are knocking and you're knocking. You're knocking. You're like, I know there's more. And that door to more. Hey! Is your portion. Oh, Ha my eye. I saw this angel of fire. Whoa. Felt that. Fire. Lord says, just be free to receive everything the Lord has for you in a door of encounter. Jesus touches your ears to hear. You'll hear. Whoa, hear. Here, here, and here as never before. Mo mo ho yo bo yo. Mo yo 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 yo. It felt like there was betrayal. Becky, just be hey, be free. Ho. Mama, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's really hot. Whoa, mozo como yo. Como hoyo. Just lift your hands. There's like a, this cloud of fire right above you, Lord. I, what's, this, what's your name? Kathy. Lord, thank you for Kathy. Jesus touches your ears to hear. Ears to hear and eyes to see. And there's an increase of prophetic grace. Fire! Fire. And oh, there's anointing for intercession on you. Kamaya, ya, 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 ya. Hey, hey, hey. The Lord says, woman of God, be set free to be, whoa, to be everything God's called you to be. Woman of God, arise. Let that fire, hey, that the enemy's tried to stop. Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. That thing tried to stop the purpose of God. So I say, be free in Jesus' name. You're free today in Jesus' name. 
como yo bozo como yo boro boyo mundo robo yo bozo como yo moyo yo 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 kama ma 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 ho ho yo bozo como yo there's an angel of the lord woman of god just lifting off weights burdens uneasiness that generational thing that's just whoa whew, it's been stopping the purpose of God be free in Jesus name hey Lord says, be at rest, woman of God. Hey. Just lift your hands. There's like this little cloud of fire right above you. Yeah, just lift your mouth real high. It's okay. What's your name? Judah. Oh, that's a cool name. When you said Judah, I saw this trumpet come right from your spirit because there's a sound. There's a sound and a voice that you need to have. There's supposed to be fire coming out of your mouth. No more stuck. Let the, hey, let the trumpet come out. Hey. I'm restoring joy, says the Lord. I'm restoring joy, says the Lord. Ears to hear. Whoa, shokomoyo. Como oh, fire, it's hot. Ho ho bo shokoboyo. There's a big fire angel. Fire of God. Ho! Como yo. Oh, there's a thing. Jesus taking right out of your heart. Go! There it is. Gone in Jesus' name. Como yo 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 yo, mundo bo yo mozo como yo, ho yo 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 yo, hey! Ears to hear as never before. Ears to hear. I see the hand of Jesus right on your heart. Song of Solomon 8 verse 6. He sets himself as a seal of love on your heart. Kamaya ya mosa kabaya. Como yo 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 yo. Kondorobosho konomo yo ndorobosho komo yo. Kondoroboyo. Lord, thank you for Barbara who just Looser, whoa, to be everything you've called her to be in Jesus' name. Come, fire. Whoa, Jesus touches your ears. Prophetic grace. Come, visions. You're not just prophetic grace, you're a prophetess. So he just, hey. Como mo yo 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 Sheke be ye ye bo ya masa ka mo ya ba ha ya ba ya bo ka ya Kindere bo ya ba ka ya mo sa ka ba ya Lord thank you for Philip I just I actually just hamahasoka 
the hand of Jesus. I just saw it just right. Fire! Oh, yo, yo. Mahamo, Sandy, just lift your hands. I feel like there's like a, always been a strong Nabi gift of prophecy, but the Lord's opening, I believe, today, a seer dimension. Jesus touches your ears to hear. And also, I saw this big shoe, like you'd see, like it looks like... Um, almost like skiing shoes. I've never really been skiing, but they look like big. And, and, I, and I asked the Lord, the Lord said, that's a grace to unstuck people, deliverance, grace for her. So Lord, thank you for this. Whoa! Open up that seer realm. Eyes to see. Whoa, it just got really hot. Everything you put in me is a free gift of grace, so let there be a Transfer of grace. My And Sandy, there's like a, a like a you're just sitting in like this pool of fire. So I just bless that. Fire! You're gonna be free to walk as never before. Lord, thank you for Delia. Give her eyes. Whoa! Eyes to see as never before. Ho yo yo yo. Set her free to be everything you've called her to be. Fire. Daily, I just see this Jesus putting this whoa torch of fire right in your heart. Mamaha soka mahaya. Go there, Lord. Mahaya mahaya bo. I see you praying in the spirit and singing in the spirit and fire coming out of your mouth. And there's an angel putting oil right on the top of your head, on your eyes to see. Wind. Of heaven. Ooh. Jesus now in front of you touches your ears to hear. Ears to hear. Mohoyo bohoyo. Ay, 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 ay. Delia, the Lord says he's pleased with you. Maha sokabaya. More, Lord. As much as he can handle and supposed to receive in this meeting. Now, now, who? Como yo, 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 yo. Mo yo, bo, ho, yo, bo, yo, bo, yo. Jesus puts his hands right on your eyes, eyes of fire. Now. Whoa. Whoa! There's an angel just lifting off burdens, weights, any wrong yokes, right there. Whew. Right there. More. Learn from rest as never before. Learn from rest. There remains a rest of faith. Mohoyo bosoko boyo. Thank you, Lord. We got really hot. Really hot. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Como hoyo bosoko boyo. More, Lord. He's like lifting off burdens, weights, concerns. Now Jesus got his hand right on your heart. It's a hand of fire. It's a hand of fire, and it's just marking your heart with his love, with his kindness. You are worthy to receive. You know, there's sometimes we have these experiences, and we just, 
this unworthiness thing comes on us. So I say be set free right there. More. Go. Right there. Ooh, ooh, felt that. Right there. And as soon as I said go, I just saw this blanket of love. Jesus wrapped his arms around you. You're worthy to receive. Shame, guilt, condemnation, not good enough. That just all goes. All goes. Abuse, being taken advantage of. Go! In Jesus' name. You know, sometimes you have these experiences and they just, they traumatize us. And it just sticks with us even sometimes after we get born again. Moho soko boyo. Moho yo bo soko boyo. Love of God, kindness of God. Moyo boho yo bo soko boyo. Mondoro bo koyo, ndoro bo koyo, ndoro bo koyo. Como ho yo bo soko moyo soko boyo. Yoro mo ho yo ndoro bo soko no moyo. Fire! Woo! Fire! So like this commissioning of fire. Fire. Fire! Ooh, fire. Como yo. Hey Jojo. I love you, Jojo. You're such a big boy now. I think you were bigger when you were like one, though. Como yo boso koboyo. Como yo boso koboyo. Freedom. Yeah, it just seems like, you know, we're trying to flow in the spirit, but it just feels like we're just all locked up. So I say, be loosed in Jesus' name. Ooh. Ooh. Nope. I said, be loosed. Jesus' name, freedom of God. Freedom of God in Jesus' name is your portion. Go and rest. Como hoyo boso koboyo. Father, just bless you today. There's a big angel of fire right behind you. And Lord, just thank you for a door of encounter opening for her. Thank you for touching her ears to hear. Fire. Fire. Transfer of grace. Ooh, felt that. Everything she's supposed to receive. Let her bring it back to Connecticut, Lord, in Jesus' name. Komahaya masika bahaya. Hi, Jojo. Can I pray for you? Would that be okay? You let me pray for you a long time ago, but you didn't know anything about it. So. Hi. Put my hand right here. Lord, I bless him in Jesus' name. I bless him as a young prophet of the Lord. I bless him with ears to hear and eyes to see. Mahamosaka Mahaya. Thank you, Lord, that he carries generational inheritance. I declare any evil thing that has tried to get his heart or obscure who you are and what you want to be for him. I declare Psalm 91 and I say any unclean thing, let it go now in Jesus' name. And I bless him to be a hearer, a hearer and a seer. <laughs> Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Ears to hear. Ears to hear. How? Oh. Ears to hear. Lord, by the authority you've given me, I just declare she's going to go way beyond. Way beyond. The descriptions, the things they said she couldn't do. Yeah. 
Katie, I just see Jesus has put his hand right in your heart. He's unhooking something in your heart to release you into freedom as never before. Words, labels, boxes. I free you in Jesus' name. I see you like dancing and worshiping the Lord. There's a new rhythm as the Lord adjusts your heart. The Lord says what you never thought you could do, you can do. What you never thought you could do, you can do. Stand right there and I'll pray for you. Just put your hands real high because I see like this electrical wire from heaven. Lord, just thank you for the lightnings of heaven. I see Jesus standing in front of you and he's putting this big scroll right in your heart because the Lord says uh, you've been faithful. You've been faithful to steward everything he's put in your hand. And Mahaya, Mahaya. And the Lord says the greatest days are ahead of writing history with him. And you're going to hear, you're going to hear. And you're going to see, and there's a river of fire running on the inside of you. The next three months, maha, three to six months, there's some things that are going to come to the surface, but it's because of the fire that's coming. And he's going to de- build within you a deep, deep foundation to carry the weight of glory. Lord, just thank you. Freely you've given, so freely I just, now! Oh, right there. Fire. Yeah. And Jesus touches your ears, not that you don't hear, but he's like any wax in there, just taken out, just feel like ears pop in Jesus' name. I love you, Jojo. Will you let somebody hold them? I'd like to pray for you. Might be a little hard now. Maybe if you give them a few minutes. Thank you, Lord. It's okay. It's okay. When I get a chance. Really. Hi, guys. You guys want prayer? Awesome. They all want prayer? That's awesome. Wow. Wow. Do you want prayer, too? They're brothers? Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Just lift your hands, guys, and just shut your eyes. Not that shutting your eyes is spiritual, just so you just focus on what God has. Yeah. Lord, I just thank you for these guys. I thank you that in this group, there's like a Samuel, there's a Daniel, there's a Joseph. And in the name of Jesus, God, I just release your fire, fire, ears to hear, creative ideas, inventions. Thank you, Lord, that he's got an excellent spirit. I cancel in the name of Jesus. I cancel in Jesus' name. Anything that's trying to get against the purpose of God, I say, go! Whoa. Whew. We lose any burdens. Any weights, any wrong ideas, go. Life of God, come now. Peace of God, come. Thank you, Lord, that he's got a healing anointing on his life. Thank you that his mouth will speak the ways of God. Thank you that he has favor with you. Bless the seer dimension in this one, God. Bless you. Bless the heart of justice that's supposed to be on the inside of him. Lord, I bless the purity of his heart. May his mouth be used as a trumpet piece in the earth. Give them eyes to see, God. 
the beauty of the Lord. Anything not from heaven in that generational line that tried to suffocate him, go! In Jesus' name. Ooh, felt that. Give me ears to hear, God. Ears to hear. Eyes to see. Ears to hear. Eyes to see. Lord, thank you. Even at this age, he's got great sensitivity to you. Whoa. you for a lifting of burdens, of weights, any performance, anxiety, any place where I'm not doing good enough. We just say, rest of God, yoke of God, rest of God, yoke of God. Can I pray for you? <laughs> What's your name? David. You're David? How old are you? Seven. You know, I have a brother called David. He's seven. So that's pretty cool. Like, I think there's like something going on between us. I'm not sure what it is, but Lord, thank you for David. Thank you that you got fire going down his mind. So you're given a brilliant mind. Thank you that he'll be a sign and a wonder in the earth to point people to you. And I just bless the fire on his head. Give him a listening ear. Give him a heart to know you. Let his life bring people great joy in the Holy Spirit. Give him ears to hear and eyes to see. Let him always hunger for the authentic power of God. May he know you all the days of his life. Whew, power of God. Just bless that fire going through his body now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, let his generation do things my generation will never have the time to do, and I bless him. Whoa! With the inheritance to do that. Bless the prophetic voice that's supposed to come out of his mouth. Words from heaven that shape earth. Thanks, David. Thank you, Lord. Komoyo boso kopoyo. I could just lift your hands. Father, I just thank you for her life. Father, I just thank you that the greatest chapter of her life is yet to be written. Father, I just thank you where the enemy tried to put an end, you just say, I'm not done. I just see this river of fire and healing. It's running from your right shoulder down into your heart, so I bless that river of healing. More, Lord. I don't know why, but I see this picture that as I lay hands on you today, the Lord is going to open a door of encounter to heavenly places that's going to define how you see and relate to God in a way you have not known. There's a door. I break you free from performance. I break you free from struggle. I break you free from many times not feeling like you measure up. And we just bless the fire of God. Bless the fire of God. I don't know what this is too. Yeah, it just, like the last three months, just felt like you're breaking ahead, but just felt like this 
just, just this ugly thing tried to just snatch and destroy your spirit. So I just say that unclean spirit, go right there, go, go. Unclean spirit, guilt, condemnation, religion, performance, be broken. And I say you're now free. You're now free. You're now free to be everything God's created you to be. And I see Jesus' hand. It's touching your mind. It's touching your mind. 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 Fire on your mind. And it was like, I just saw this little girl. It's like the last few months you've been like in this like, Hole, and every time you just peek your head out like an adventure, it's just like the enemy just tries to put you back down there through words and judgment. But I just say that that little girl comes alive and it doesn't get stuck back in that hole anymore. Como hoyo hoyo. He whom the sun sets free free indeed. Okay, just lift your hands. What's your name? Lord, thank you for just lift them up real high. Lord, I just thank you. Oh, okay. Lord, by the authority you've given me, I just loose you into freedom and I release the fire of God in your joints your legs the Lord says daughter don't grow weary in well doing for in due season you'll receive a reward and the enemy tried to stop your mouth. He tried to put this noose on your mouth. So I said, just go in Jesus' name. Mahaya osho okomo oyo bosoko boyo. Kembe ye moya mahaya mo shahaya bahaya. Open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. And your words will define your next season. Keep your eyes focused on me. Don't look to the left or to the right. Don't listen to other voices. For indeed, I'll cause you to overcome and walk on the water. Mohoyo mosokomoyo. Komoyo yo yo yo. Ombokoyo mohoyo. And I just release fire on your hands, through your arms, in your joints, fire, 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 motono moyo, transfer, grace, como hoyo moso koboyo, Get some water. Lord, I thank you for my friend John. John, the Lord says you're a faithful man. Mahaya Mosakabaya. Just put your hands up. Lord, I just, uh, there's an angel to your right, John, and that I believe there's just a release of the spirit of wisdom and revelation, but also the Lord is releasing grace for you to be like a bulldozer and to, Mahaya, a bulldozer and a bulldog. A bulldozer and a bulldog to hold on to what God is telling you. So, Father, I just, whoa, right there. Whoa. 
spirit of wisdom and revelation and fire to be a bulldozer for you, God. Mohoyo mosoko boyo. Fire. Fire. Ho! Mohoyo mohoyo mosoko boyo. And Father, we agree tonight that weather doesn't keep anyone back from coming. That those who need to be here, mohoyo mohoyo. Those who need to be here, Lord, let all those hurting that are supposed to receive tonight, don't. Anything that stops them, anything that tries to prevent them from coming, we break its power. Let this room. That every person ordained to be in this room tonight, let them come tonight. How is your name? Lord, I thank you for Rebecca. Lord, we thank you that you're just, hey, loosing her into greater freedom. He whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Moyo bokoyo mohoyo. Amaya ya 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 ya. A sound mind. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Mohoyo. Moyo no boyo no boyo. Are you guys together? Oh. You what? You what? Oh, that's your girlfriend. Oh, so you're not really together. That's like half together. <laughs> not really together. What's your name? Savannah. Oh, Lord, thank you for Savannah. Savannah. Yeah, Sabeth. Sabeth. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you for her life. There's a crown on your head. So you're a princess in the kingdom. The Lord says you're a princess in the kingdom. And I see him, he puts his arms of embrace around you with his love and his kindness. And the Lord says to you, you're his beloved daughter in whom he's well pleased. And I hear this in my heart. Lord, what do I need to do? He said, I just want you to love me right now. Focus on me. But I got these questions. He goes, I just want you to love me right now. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, anything that's hindered the love of God, go! Whoa! More, Lord. I loose the yoke of religion and performance, and I'm not good enough. Go, in Jesus' name. That's a generational thing. Deep inside. Go, in Jesus' name. Foul spirit, you go, in Jesus' name. And Jesus touches your ears to hear. More. Whew. Right there. Rest and freedom is your portion. Freedom is your portion. Mo 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 yo bo bo koyo. Words, as a child spoken over you. Words came from the pulpit. Go! In Jesus' name, right there. Go. Yep. Kindness of God now come. I saw this blanket of the love of God just wrap itself around you. And it, 
it keeps wrapping because he's going to hold you tight from this day forward. You're going to sleep like never before. Maka aboka mahaya. Unworthiness. Unclean spirit. Go. In Jesus' name. Emeki ama ashaka bahaya. Be free. In Jesus' name. Yeah, just rest in the love of God. Mokoyo mohoyo hokoyo bo. Sir, you got a really strong prophetic anointing, and God just wants to hey increase it on your life. The Lord's whoa. The Lord says you're a faithful man. Today's a day of upgrade. Eyes to see. Hama ya ya ya. Let there just be a transfer of grace. Freely I receive. Freely I just release to this man. And I just say a new day of breakthrough and freedom is now his portion. Kamahama shika amahaya. Ko. In the realm of the spirit, things you've never thought you would hear or experience are now yours. It's open to you. You're a mahahaya. I saw Proverbs 4 just stamped on your heart. You do guard your heart. Mohoyo oyo bokoyo boyo. The Lord says you got a one-track mind in a good way. He's really pleased with that. And I see like when you hear things from the Lord, it's like you grab onto them. It's not like you, you just see like you're, you're, you're like a bulldog who just grabs it. And you're like, that's the Lord. I'm grabbing that. And I see Jesus. He's, it's really cool sometimes. He's just got this fist and he just goes, Pow! fire. Fire to know me, fire to see me, fire to experience me like never before in Jesus' name. The Lord so pleased with you. And there's a lifting of burdens from this angel, Lord. Burdens go, whoosh, Jesus' name, and life of God come. Eyes to see, a revelatory spirit to see. Ama abo shahama suka bahaya. Mende buka ama shika bahaya. Lord, thank you for Dina. Everything she was supposed to receive in these days. There's just a door of the beauty of the Lord. I believe you'll look upon this day and you'll say, a new day open to me on that day. Just take a step forward. And prophetic insight to your children's lives as never before. And I see like this, this staircase. The Lord says you're going higher and higher and higher as never before. But as you go higher, you're going to have to leave some things you didn't even realize were there. But you'll go higher and higher and higher. The Lord just told me, he said, she's very teachable. I like teaching her. And the Lord says, because you're teachable, I'm going to accelerate the pace as never before. I'm going to increase understanding and wisdom. And I just saw that this scroll of wisdom and understanding being just released to you. So now, right there, in Jesus' name, we just bless that scroll of understanding and wisdom. And anything that's held you back and try to stop you, we just say, freedom is your portion. Freedom is your portion. And you will dance before the Lord and demons will tremble. Yeah. Yeah, she dances. She's a pretty good dancer. I know, I saw. Yeah, Kamahaya Musakamaya. What's your name? Lord, thank you for Brandon. Just lift your hands. Mohoyo Mosokomoyo. Lord, thank you for Brandon. Lift him up real high, Brandon. Just release. Ho! Freedom. 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 
freedom. Freedom. Mohoyo moso koboyo. Unclean spirit. Just go. Whoa. Oh, 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 mohoyo moso koboyo. Warlord. Ears to hear. Father, release this young man into the free Whoa! to the freedom that you have for him. For I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Thoughts of hope and a future. The enemy's tried to steal you of your future by destroying you in the present. Burdens, weights, worries, concerns. Go. In Jesus' name. Whoa, right there. More. More, 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 more. More, more, mohaya masika baya, mondo bo koyo mo soko boyo, komo shoko boyo, fire! Ah! Wow, komo hoyo, komo hoyo mo soko boyo, komo hoyo mo soko boyo, mondo bo hoyo mo soko boyo. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything you did. We come into agreement for the purpose of God to be fulfilled tonight. Thank you for drawing people from the north to south, the east and the west. Thank you for that miracle angel that's in this room already. And Lord, we just declare this ground, this holy ground, there'll be no... There will be nothing that can stop the purpose of God. No incantation, no witches, no witchcraft. But the name of Jesus, I just see, this is a beautiful thing. I see that Jesus just sitting on a throne right in the middle of this auditorium. And we ask, like, it's, like they said in the book of Acts, through your hand, do miracles tonight. That Jesus would be glorified. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Lord.